So you guys, I am thrilled to have Dr. Tony Warner with us today on our Monday morning breakthrough show. So listeners, if you guys are hearing this and you missed our live event, please join us for the next Zoom. You're gonna find it in the Brave Badass Healers, a community for world changers group on Facebook. You'll not only enjoy our guest speaker segment, but there's gonna be business development, networking, and a speaker showcase where you're invited to take the Zoom stage and give us a breakthrough. But without further ado, I want you guys to understand Dr. Tony Warner. She is a mom of four, licensed and brain spotting certified psychotherapist, success and leadership mentor for parents, professionals, and innovators, inspirational speaker, and best-selling author. She helps the ambitious optimize their mental and spiritual health so they can feel more successful and connected in their relationships, careers, and life direction. A leader in her field, she's on a mission to revolutionize ourselves and our systems through her teachings on the intersection of the psychological, spiritual, and social political. You guys, high achieving leaders risk burnout every day and you're gonna you're going tony's gonna talk about like how not only to avoid that today but how to thrive as a high achiever dr tony warner give us a breakthrough will ya thanks for having me laura i'm so happy to be here all right so i'm curious who here just by like a nod of heads or raise of hands, considers themselves a high achiever or feels like they fall under that general category. Sometimes high achievement can get a bad rap. Sometimes high achievement can become a label where we feel like we have to be a high achiever or else. And so what I want to talk about today is how can we embrace this part of us being this achiever without having to sacrifice the things that matter most to us, including ourselves and our, and our health, because that's what happens most often. So I, just a little bit of, of my experience is that I wouldn't have called myself a high achiever, even though I was technically what someone would call an overachiever for most of my life. I, labels aren't my thing. So I wouldn't have called myself that, but I had burnt out a couple of times in my 20s. And I also was hospitalized by the age of 20 because I had really struggled with anxiety and depression, but no one knew because I was really good at doing things for other people, at pushing myself really hard and at keeping my vulnerabilities or my needs or my wants hidden from the world. And I'm curious if any of you can relate to a sense of needing to be the, maybe the strong one or the responsible one or the one who has it all together or the one who's getting it all done all the time. We've got head nods, we've got hand raises, right? Like, so you fall in this achievement category of like achievement matters to me, me goals matter to me, I have goals. I had a five-year plan, I hit every single goal, right? Like boom, 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 right? And what happened? Well. By the time I was 30, I had had my third child. I had earned my PhD. I had two master's degrees. I had a stable job doing the work that I had planned on doing with a stable salary, good insurance, owned my home, owned my car, and I did not feel fulfilled, which makes no sense to most of the world, right? Like, why? If you hit all your goals, have any of you experienced that? I hit my goal, but then I'm like, but wait, what's next? What's more? There's got to be more. This like It's kind of anticlimactic. That means one of two things usually, that you were pushing to achieve either from a place of needing to please usually wanting to please others or just scared that you wouldn't please others, right? So you don't want to disappoint them or needing to prove. I need to prove myself. And for me, again, I wouldn't admit this at the time, but I felt like I had something to prove because as a mixed woman that was overweight, the daughter of pastors, all of these things seemed to be like, I didn't fit in a category everyone else seemed to fit in. 
And so I feel like I had something to prove, like maybe this will make me feel wanted. Maybe this will give me value. And so my achievement status was really being fueled by this need to prove that I was worthy of being wanted. But here's the thing. When we push ourselves in that way, either to prove or to please, or to avoid not pleasing, however that fits for you, we will not feel fulfilled. We will not feel free, no matter how many goals we hit. Because there's always the next thing, the next person, the next idea in our heads that tells us we need to please or to prove. Is this fitting or sitting for some of you? Yeah. And it looks different for each of us in our own ways. But the importance of this message isn't that, oh, if you're a high achiever, you're going to burn out. That's not, that does not need to be true at all. I am still a high achiever. I still fall in that category. In fact, now I have four children and I run two businesses, <laughs> right? I'm still a high achiever, but I I feel fulfilled in my day to day. Not 1000% of the time, all of the time, because I'm human, right? But my life feels fulfilling to me. I am not in burnout. I know how to manage the anxiety that can come up, but not even just know how to, right? Because it's one thing to know. We all know that there's information all over the place, right? We can gather information in this information heavy stage, anytime, any place, just Google. It's not just about knowing how, it's about being able to do it, to apply it, to implement it, to embed it, right? And so I use this model that I created and I'm going to share it here with you today. One of the very few times I've shared this publicly, I typically only share it in one-to-one in -one sessions with private clients, but it's really helpful. And so it's, I've committed to sharing this more and more often this year specifically because it's a simple model that can help us be reminded that we can achieve, we can we can help the world, we can do our work, we can get things done and still not have to sacrifice ourselves and still not have to sacrifice our health. And here it is. If you have a pen, a pencil, a stick, something like that, grab it and put it between your two fingers. If you don't have that, just watch me, that's fine, okay? What happens if we flick, hit, kick, throw something at this pen? What happens to it? So I'm wobbling, falling, mine falls, right? But look, but look, I'm connected to the pen and I'm holding it, right? So why is it falling? This is what I call two finger connected. When we are two finger connected, which means we're in this place of maybe chronic stress or we're in this place of not feeling fulfilled or we're in this place of action, 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 we're two finger connected, life happens and it flicks things at us and it throws things at us. And we maybe even feel like we get kicked and we lose our grounding. When we're in this place, our energy is pinched off from maybe what you call God or source or the universe or whatever language you use. Our energy is pinched off from the whole being that was meant to support us. And our nervous systems are dysregulated. So science and soul both support this very simple theory, this very simple model that we can take with us anywhere, which is when we are two finger connected, life is happening. Sometimes there's a tornado. We see that tornado. We want to control the heck out of that tornado and everything that's being flicked at us and thrown at us. Why? Because it's affecting us so significantly. It's affecting us so significantly. Of course we want to control it. But when we're here, Hold your pen, pencil, stick, whatever you have. Hold it here. Flick it, throw something at it, hit it, whatever. It's not going anywhere. It's connected to its whole being. It's embedded. It's in the foundation. This is what I call living core connected. And when we're here, our nervous system is regulated. The energy is open for that connection to flow. When we're here, we can still get a ton done. In fact, what brain science tells us is that when we're in this place, this is where creativity and flow can happen. When we're in this place, our logical thinking brain, it can't do its job as well. It can't function as well. 
but this is where most people live. When we are achievers that are coming from this place of prove or please, this is where we live. And we can pop in here sometimes, right? If we're doing something we enjoy, like writing or reading, like going out in nature, doing something fun. But if we're only doing that here and there, and our lifestyle isn't set up in a way that helps us to live here more often, then we're out here more often, which means we're going to be in this place of wanting to control, to fix, and therefore we're going to be doing more and feeling less productive. Does that make sense? We're going to be doing more and yet feeling less productive because nothing is able to connect with us as deeply as it could to support us here. Our brain can't support us as well here because it's in survival mode. It wants to protect us. So it's not in the mode of creativity and flow, which is where we get most inspired, which is where we can actually connect and contribute in a more meaningful way. And so something I want to, to share with you that connects with what, some of what Laura was sharing earlier is that we all have a very little likelihood of being here. In fact, what, what is hypothesized is that there's only about a one in 400 trillion probability of you existing right here, right now, today. That's not for no reason. That is not for no reason. It's for a reason. And your ability to achieve can be a blessing and a gift. But you can most likely, most often tap into it when you are here. Core connected, supported by the whole, the energy flowing from your source, your guide, your energy source. Your brain actually regulated and able to support your whole system. Right? No one can stay here or here forever. It's not possible. Even the most exercise mentally fit person in the world can't say here. I have been, I've always known I was going to be a psychotherapist, right? I've always known I was going to be a psychotherapist, even though when I was younger, I refused to see a therapist because I was like, they can't help me, right? The irony, right? I had to do it all myself, super independent, which many of you can, I'm sure, understand. But what super independent here, trying to do it on my own with all of the world, feeling like it's coming at me, like exhausting, exhausting. Even if you're running an empire, you can run an empire from here. It's just not going to feel very fulfilling, not very often, or you're going to feel more depleted than you are fulfilled, right? So we want to take this with us. And someone, someone shared something. I say, I'm loving the two finger hold and I can't, <laughs> and I can't stand it. You're making me cry. I've been trying to figure this out for so long. I'm ready for my life to give me more of what I want for it. And that is a beautiful thing. So this is a really important, I'm glad that you shared this. So the purpose of this model isn't to make you feel bad. If you got to cry, you need to cry, let that out. Let that out. Don't hold that in. But this is not to make you feel bad. Why? Because shame and blame will only keep you out here longer. They'll only keep, and it doesn't matter if you're shaming and blaming yourself or someone else, both will keep you out here longer. So what we get to do when we notice, am I in this two finger connected place, which means do I feel like the world is coming at me? Do I feel like I need to control more? Do I feel like I need to take more action, more action? To your point about social media, if you're here and you're asking yourself questions about social media, it's going to feel exhausting. And you, you might do a ton of work at this place. You might be posting all over the place, right? But when you're here, you might post less, but with more intention and inspiration. And therefore, your productivity levels and your impact, your influence, they go further. You can be doing so much more out here and still have more of an influence here. But only if when we notice that we're here, we allow ourselves some compassion. That I'm out here because I'm human. And me noticing I'm out here is a really freaking good thing because now I can start to do something about it. So when I had shared, you know, I, I was 33 kids, all that stuff, PhD, 
And I was looking at my life and I was feeling unfulfilled. We have about four minutes left. Thank you for that warning. You know, I looked really good on paper. I looked really good on paper. And so it didn't make sense. Why was I not here? If I were to compare myself and many of you, cause you're probably compassion led if you're in this group with Laura, right? Compassion led, heart led. Many of you are like, but if I look at other people's lives, I should be thankful. I should, I should be grateful for what I have. That's what I call guilty gratitude. And when you feel guilty, in order to make yourself feel grateful, you're still out here. Now you might be, maybe you're inching a little bit closer depending on where you were out here. It's a spectrum. Can just consider this two finger hold the emotional spectrum. All the way over here is the hopelessness. Then you can move closer. You can move closer up the spectrum, right? But to make yourself feel guilty in order to feel gratitude, that's gonna keep you out here. So if you're looking at yourself in your life, you're like, oh, well, I should just feel thankful. That's gonna bring me back here. Not if you make yourself feel guilty about it. No, we don't have to compare and feel guilt in order to make ourselves feel better. Because the reality is that everyone is in a different place and a different space forever and for always. Forever and for always. No one is ever going to be in the same exact space and the same exact, exact thing going on as you do which means you could compare until the end of days. And you can make yourself feel guilty and force yourself into gratitude, which is a guilty gratitude, not a real deep appreciation gratitude, right? And that's not gonna move you in. So what we can just allow it to be is when you notice that you're out here, you're looking at your life, you're like, I should feel this way. We're gonna grab the should, we're gonna put it to the side. I do feel this way. This is the way that you feel, good, bad, or in between. I do feel this way right now. I would like to feel different, but I do feel this way right now. I can see, I can feel that I'm two finger connected. What might I need right now? I could have felt shame. I was, and at certain parts I did because I, I felt like I should have felt fulfilled, but my marriage was a, was a wreck. And that was a big part for me, right? And so I could have felt shame and blame around that. And there were times that I did, but once I released that shame and blame, and I said, no, I know what I want. I know who I'm going to be in this world. I know at my core well, how I value being. It helps me get back here. And from here, I was able to help essentially create a new marriage. And I didn't even think that was possible when I was out here. The possibilities, the perspectives, they shift when you're here. And so in order to get here, the irony is that we need to let it be okay if we're here in business, in parenting, in marriage, in health, with yourself, whatever it is. It's okay that you're here. You'll be here again. But you won't have to stay as long each time you notice. And you'll be able to come in a little bit faster, a little bit more efficiently each time you notice. And you'll be able to be here, core connected, longer, amplify the inspiration and the connection here longer. And here we get creative solutions for our businesses, for our marriages, for our parenting, for society, and all the division that's been happening there. So I want, to take, I want you all to take this with you and see what it can do for you, whether you're here or whether you're here. And let that be a reminder to reclaim reclamation, to reclaim who you really are. I love it, Tony. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness, you guys are, I was writing notes. I don't know about you guys, but core connected, supported by the whole. And I think that's the first time I've heard the term guilty gratitude. So I really appreciated that about guilty gratitude. You guys have something that Dr. Tony Warner said today's given you the goosebumps, you're resonating with it. I want you to drop down into our show notes today because I have her hooked up with her website and she has a lot of amazing things going on. So you're going to want to explore that. Tony, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for what you do in the world and for sharing it with everyone today.
Thank you for having me. Thank you everyone for participating. I appreciate it. So you guys, I, I would love for you not to miss our next episode of this Monday morning breakthroughs. It's going to be on June 5th. I'm going to have Drew Gerber on the show talking about how to know if you're actually ready for the publicity you think you want. He's going to have a tip or two for you. But for today's show with Tony, I just want to wrap up by saying this. Your words change the world when you're brave enough to share them. So it is time to be brave. Brave Healer Productions is here to help you share your brave words with the world in a bigger way and break through to that next level of life and business. So we'll see you on the next one.